Greetings from the Tulsa World OU Sports Extra Team. I am Nate Fakin, joined by Eric Bailey and Mason Young after the Sooners dispose of Temple in their home opener of the season, 51-3. to uh, Eric, there is some lots of good, but there was some bad that came from tonight as well. You know, really bad news for the Oklahoma wide receivers. Jalil Farouk, we learned from Brent Venables, broken foot. He's going to be out six to eight weeks. Surgery next week, going to put a screw in his foot. Uh, Brent Venables does feel optimistic that he will be back this season, but it's just a tough blow for the offense. They already lost Jaden Gibson for the season. That's two wide receivers, two experienced wide receivers. We got a chance to talk to Seth Luttrell, who expects some of the wide receivers to stay Step up, but again, it, it's a big loss because Jalil Farouk is one of the team leaders, especially on that offense. So we'll have to see moving forward who's going to really make plays at that wide receiver position. Uh, then I know there are some other additional injuries as well, correct? Exactly. I think we had uh, we looked at what happened with Branson Hickman, the center, went out in the first series of the game. It really made readjusting on that offensive line, and we don't know what's going to happen to ankle sprain. We weren't given a timetable on that. There were some players that sat out. Um, Woody Washington didn't play, could have played, didn't play. They said they really didn't feel like they needed him to play. Gentry Williams played a couple snaps, but they pulled him back. And then Eli Bowen, the talented player, talented freshman, could have played. Of course, they, Brent Venable said they didn't want to push him. I think all three of those players could have played more they needed to but of course 51 to 3 was indicative that they really didn't need to play him but uh, I think if it was a big game SEC game they would have played him. Sure and, and you mentioned Jaleel Farouk going down I know with talking to Deion Burks a little bit who uh, stepped up and had quite the debut today he didn't you could tell they were all pretty bummed about that injury but uh, Mason how about more on that offense and, and Burks big day? Right uh, we were just talking about it before we hopped on here right first time since 2009 Ryan Broyles in 2009 that a player had three touchdowns and one half in a game and, and so Deion Burks you know got going quickly and, and it was fascinating to watch in the sense that we remember seeing him in the spring game when he first came over for from Purdue and uh, he was catching you know long bombs from Jackson Arnold these were like all in the red zone and it was just a matter of him using his speed and his quickness moving laterally getting open and you know he showed that he's a star in the making for OU which we caught glimpses of that in the spring game. Looking at the offense in totality tonight, right? You know, Jackson Arnold, I think he had 68% completions, 141 yards, four touchdown passes. You know, not great, not awful. He did get in the run game too. 11 carries for 34 yards, and, and that's an element that, you know, they didn't have last year with Dylan Gabriel that they can maybe unlock a little bit more with him this season. We did see some really good stuff from freshman running back Taylor Tatum tonight, you know? Number one running back in the 2024 recruiting class, and he had a great debut, went over. 40 yards on four carries, had a long run late in the game, and then had, got his first career collegiate touchdown. So overall, a fairly solid night for the offense. Uh, you know, Jackson Arnold was asked after the game apparently about them not hitting on any deep shots, and he said, who cares? We won 51-3. to And so uh, a decent start and a lot to improve on. Very matter of the fact, matter of fact from the quarterback, and how can you argue with him? On the other side of the ball, Eric, uh, lots of highlights from the defense tonight in, in this first game of the season. You know, I think this team would have loved to shut out, I mean, but you're not going to argue with three points. Right. I mean, I think they, uh, Temple did get a late field goal to make it 51-3, to three, but this is a defense that only allowed 197 yards. This is a defense that forced six turnovers, uh, the most turnovers since 2003. They forced four turnovers. One of them did come uh, on special teams, but still six turnovers, four fumbles. Uh, that, you know, they only received or recovered six fumbles all last year. They got four tonight. It was a big time effort by the defense. Kenai Walker had an interception. Kendall Doby had an interception tonight. Uh, this is a team that had uh, 20 interceptions all last year and uh, it, it, 26 turnovers when you combine them. They had six tonight, so they're well on pace to exceed 26. Uh, finished seventh nationally in turnovers, so this is a team that is going to be opportunistic, so we'll see what happens, but this was a big time effort by this defense. Brent Venables was excited about how they did. Uh, but they think they can be better. And we had a chance to talk to Zach Alley after the game, and I was really impressed. First time we've talked to him since he took the job. I mean, this is something we've been waiting for is an opportunity <laughs> to talk to him. Really impressed by him. Uh, Brent Venables' protege. You can really tell that he has, you know, he even said, a lot of people say I sound like Brent. They did. Yeah, he did. And he yeah. does. Yeah. He really he does. <laughs> and uh, I'm really excited to see what kind of this defense this is going to turn out to be. I know Temple was overmatched. We will say that. This is a team that was really, really overmatched tonight. But uh, there's a lot of chance, a lot of reasons for Oklahoma fans to be op optimistic about what this defense can be. So uh, I'm really interested to see what happens next week against Houston. 
So as that one pace guy, you're saying a thousand turnovers this a year. A thousand, right? yeah, <laughs> a thousand. Or what is it? Six times twelve is what? Six times twelve, seventy-two. Yeah, I so yeah. I think seventy-two turnovers. They're on pace for seventy-two turnovers there this year. There we go. We'll, we'll see. Right here, you heard it. So uh, in the last phase of the game, Mason, the Sooners had a lot of success too, and uh, from some new names even. Right. Well, I mean, the play of the night was on special teams was Jaron Kanick, you know, scooping up that fumble and getting the touchdown. You know, looking back to his days as a running back at Hayes High School. It was Lewis Carter that, you know, blocked the kick, and, and they were able to, you know, combo on that and, and make it happen. And it's really big for guys to make the most out of opportunities like that, uh, you know, because they might not get on the field otherwise. And, and what that does for a player like a Kanick is it builds confidence that the coaches want to put him back out there, you know, in other situations. So that was really big to get that touchdown. But then the kicking game being solid tonight was huge, so huge. I mean, you know, it's it's been a talking point all off season is are they going to really be better in the kicking game? with how Zach Smith struggled the last two years only being a 70% kicker. And they've settled on this this kind of combo with Zach Smith, uh, you know, being the power boot on kickoffs. And then Tyler Keltner, the Florida State transfer, came in. And tonight, his, his OU debut, he made uh, two field goals, or three field goals actually, but two that were one over 40 and one, over, and one at 50. And so that is a really, really good sign early, uh, considering that, you know, Zach Schmidt missed six kicks last year. and. That was a real point of woe for OU the past couple seasons under Brent Venables. And looks like, uh, at least by what we've seen initially, that Tyler Keltner is going to really shore up what they're doing in the kicking game. Absolutely. And that, that'll wrap things up. We hit all three phases of the game. We're predicting thousands of turnovers. <laughs> and the Sooners win big in their opener over the Temple Owls, 51-3. to For the Tulsa World OU Sports Extra team, I am Nate Fakin, joined by Eric Bailey and Mason Young. Keep watching us.